You're doing a great job. I think we are live. We are? I think we're already live. We're already live? That doesn't sound good. What? Whatever that crash was. Sound check. Sound check. That was no stop it. Stop it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Check. <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh, Fatiz! Hello, hello, hello. Neil Morgan, Dennis Cross, Charlotte Stout, DW Low, Jim Stewart, Brian Jenny Williams, Schmidt Mutson. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Wearing my Paul Valley shirt. I see that. Just for you. Aww. And it was on top of the clean clothes pile. <laughs> well, you know. Lucky Next you. In Next in line. Red Mist is on here. Damien Larson. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, so much, so much. Lots of fun stuff to go over this evening. Fun, fun, fun. Let's see, we're going to go officially live in a little less than dos minutos. Two and two. Oh. So glad you could join tonight. Eric Miller! So I was um, kind of playing a little bit with the magic rules and in a solo setting and trying to trying to decide if it was going to work okay in a solo setting because um, because of the card discarding function. Because in the magic rules mm. as they stand right now, mm -hmm. uh, you have that option to discard. Or um, to, to avoid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to pump up the power of your spells. Uh, and yeah. to pump up the resisting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And discarding is a little bit more difficult in a solo game. For sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. So you don't have the hand of cards, so you have to rely on discarding attached cards. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to decide whether or not it, it played acceptable or if... if I needed to make some sort of adjustment for the solo uh, use of the magic. Because we know there are folks out there that play solo, and, and uh, we want to make sure that it works for that as well. Right, yeah, for sure. And that means I'm supposed to say something along the lines of, Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley, and I am with the world's most d -d 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 dangerous Bessie. Hello. On the main stage. The WMD, as they called her around the old neighborhood. The W... What? I, you're... What? You want... You want... You want... Well, it'd be nice to see current chatter. Current chatter? It'd be nice. Well, I mean, it'll eventually scroll up. Well, that... Was that a flash? I... No, um... It... See, it's volume... It's me hitting that button and... No, and don't. Well... Why don't you stop messing with stuff, lady? Well, if you had things in the correct position... Story of my life. I, I don't know why you insist on changing our positions for Thursday nights. So nothing is where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and everything is wrong. Everything! 
need I say more? So, uh, this Sunday, we're going to continue our Middle Earth, exciting Middle Earth uh, mini campaign. Been having a lot of fun with that. I wasn't uh, sure I was going to like it, but I'm having what? a lot of fun with it. Yeah. How could you be Middle Earth? It's the, the fruit of which all good things come from. I was going to go with nectar, but then that felt a little weird. That does feel weird. It does feel weird. <laughs> it does feel weird. <laughs> it's a little icky, sticky. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that uh, Tolkien basically ripped off Robert E. Howard's work. So, um, you know, I guess some folks think, you know, Tolkien came up with something. But basically, it was just a rewrite of Robert E. Howard's uh, fantasy work. Uh, so here we have the uh, stats for some of the characters that we're going to be using. Uh, of course, we have our lovely Mr. Bilbo Baggins on here. Tolkien was a big fan of the pulps. Tolkien really, a, a closet pulp reader, though. He couldn't let people know, but that's where a lot of his ideas came from, uh, was, um, you know, the pulp magazines. So we have Mr. Bilbo Baggins here, of course, is going to... <laughs> uh, uh, make a uh, return. And then we have a couple new characters. Uh, we got Gimrak and Atheron, and there are some of the stats for those. And then, of course, we have Spec. Uh, returning as well, who is a resident of Bree. And down here at the bottom, we have the Black Wargs. Ooh. So we got two leagues in this next game. Uh, one of the leagues is uh, Mr. At? Bilbo and uh, Gimrak. And, uh, Ooh, and Blondie. Look at that yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. We got ourselves a ranger, an elf here. Uh, and uh, oh, look at my long flowing hair! And little little speck here as well, bringing up the rear. What's that? Uh, and then look on the other dun, side of the table, dun, though. Dun. Look on the other side of the table. Four black wargs come. They look into nice. Frame. They look friendly. They look nice. They just wanna. They just. Wanna I think play. they want to be domesticated. They just wanna play. Maybe play fetch. Uh huh. Uh huh. Get a treat. Uh huh. Yeah. Or oh, they do love treats. They look nice. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. Friendly. Very that's friendly. That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. So the scenario that we're doing on Sunday is. Uh, I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings. I, I love Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Good stuff. Um, I just acknowledge the fact that it's derivative. Of uh, you know Robert E. Howard's work, um, I think that is. Never mind. What, what do you want to say? <laughs> he added a little bit to it. I mean, Tolkien had some cool ideas. It's just you know. I think derivative is an incredibly derogatory term. No, it's not. And no, it's too. Not. No, it's not. Everything's derivative of something. But derivative is what? It's like has a negative connotation. No, it's just acknowledging that, you know... I think if we took he, a vote, let's take a vote. Tolkien stands on the sh shoulders of giants, which is Robert E. Howard, you know, so... Are you insinuating you know. that he's not a giant? Well, kind of a small giant. A little giant. Are you besmirching? <laughs> not besmirching. I think you're besmirching. Dark Hunter of ours is one of my... Favorite series, yes, that's a good one. That's Are we going to fisticuffs one. over this? <laughs> well, if you want to make it a thing, <laughs> if this is the hill. <laughs> Warlords of Atlantis movie, great scenario ideas. Warlords of Atlantis movie, what movie was that? Warlords of Atlantis. Where do you know what Warlords of Atlantis is? Movie. Warlords of Atlantis. That's not. Who is in that? Warlords of Atlantis. Fistica Thursdays. <laughs> she's mean. She's she's always mean to me. <laughs> 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 Fighting 
word. That dictionary. Look it up. Dictionary. What he's saying. I'm just having a good time. Doug McClure movie. <gasps> I do. Was love he some in Doug Warlords McClure. of Atlantis? Oh, I do love that movie. I know. I know. Good old Dougie. Is that the one that has Peter Cushing in it as well? No, I wouldn't, would it? I don't know. Uh, the scenario that we're doing on Sunday is coming out of the Tomb of the Serpent book. And it's going to be the uh, Buried Secrets scenario. Ooh, very fun. So we have the uh, five plot points scattered around the table. What we don't know is we don't know where the... Um, it's a relatively basic scenario. It's it's it uh, plays very similar to just like your smash and grab, lost key, sort of that things. A few interesting special rules mm -hmm. in there. One is that we don't know where the major plot point is until we draw the card. Yep. So you got to go up to yeah five different plot points scattered around. When you complete one, you draw the card. If you draw the experience card then that means you located the missing magic item that was stolen from Bree and someone ran off and is hiding, you know, in, in this area and they're trying to track them down. At the same time, the black wards are coming in to try and find it as well. Exciting. Um, it is a 1978, is this, is this straight out of Wikipedia? Adventure Science Fiction Field, directed by Debbie Connor and Stark Douglas Carr, Pierre Gilmore, Shane Rimmer, and Leah Brody. Okay. Warlords of... Also Land that Warlords. I forgot! I love that what, one. What, 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 what? Land that time forgot. Time. Yeah. And people that time forgot, a young DW's favorites. Aww. Those were classic. That's murder. Very cool. Very cool. Land that time forgot. That's a good one. Oh, classic. 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 <laughs> Is that the one with the submarine? Yeah. And the, and the German yeah. U-boat? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so we do our, we do want to do some pregame uh, shenanigans. Okay. Uh, so I had to move this building because it was in the way of of the view tonight. So this building is is actually going to be located right here, but for the purposes of this evening to get it into a safe spot so that it's not cluttering up things, we're kind of gonna kind of move it a little bit. Uh, let's see, can we do the rolls there? So yeah. here are some of the rolls. We'll roll for random events. Uh, Bessie, roll those. I'll take the red one. Ten and a one. One of his characters are delayed. Oh my gosh, Bessie. You're the one that picked Bessie, red. Bessie, I know I did. Well, you're the one that rolled the you're white the dice. Picked, you're the one that picked red. So, um, what? <laughs> uh, so spec will be one two. Uh, Gimrock will be three four. Three four. Uh, Atheron will be 5, 6, and Bilbo will be 7, 8. Let me see what camera should I be on. This one? Yeah. 7, <gasps> 8, Bilbo. And I didn't do that one. Bilbo I didn't do it. Bilbo is delayed. Bilbo does not show up until turn 2. Does not show up until turn 2. Now, uh, a 10 is Spies. Uh, which is irrelevant because we play with our cards face up anyway. So I'm not going to re-roll for it. It's just not important. Yeah. Um, so then we can roll for initiative. All right, you red dice? I'm not saying until you roll. All right, I'll do red. <laughs> All right, so the wargs are starting off as the director. Poor little fence. Poor little fence. So I'm I'm imagining this scenario occurring somewhere just on the other side of 
uh, maggot farm. Um, so kind of before you get to the ferry, uh, what's it called? Um, what's the ferry there in Buckland? Buckleberry? Buckleberry Ferry. Mm -hmm. Buckleberry Ferry in Buckland. Uh, so that's the, the little spot there just on the other side of Maggot Farm. So that's kind of where this is taking place. So Bree, of course, has a, a pretty interesting history. Uh, one of those really, really rare communities that is pretty cosmopolitan in some ways. It's a, you know, it's just a, a town, not like a huge city or anything, but it's, it's the sort of place where you have humans and have, has, has had halflings living together in the same community mm -hmm. for quite some time. Not only that, but you have dwarves traveling through Bree fairly often down mm -hmm. those two main roads. Of course, Bree is right there at the crossroads of the, the King's Road and the Greenway. Um, but definitely you get even more dwarves as the dwarves move into the Blue Mountains. And of course, you, you have a lot more dwarves showing up in Bree. And of course, that's where um, uh, Gandalf met with uh, Oakenshield. Yeah. Uh, about their, that's where mm -hmm. they had their first meeting to yep. talk about their shared interest in dealing with smog, the dragon. So that was, that, that all happened in Bree. So, fun little community. Uh, with a lot of different stuff going on. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual for goblins to raid around that area. It's not unusual for there to be wargs howling outside the gates or the outside the wall. I think it's wall, if I remember right. Uh, but there are definitely like permanent halfling yeah. Yeah. Uh, residents of Bree, which would include our friend Speck, would be considered to be uh, a, a, a a uh, resident of mm -hmm. Bree. So for this scenario, they're trying to track down a thief that stole a magic item from Bree and ran off. And now uh, the ranger, the dwarf, and Speck have decided to go off after him. Bilbo, of course, finds out about this and decides he had better go check on them, but he's coming up a little bit late. So he'll be one turn behind. But the wargs are also in the area. Yep. So this is going to be fun. Oh, let's go ahead and shuffle the cards. So it is all about finding that magic item. Did I mention there are two spoilers in <laughs> for being a derivative work? Dave sure knows a lot about that. Um, I am a fan. I'm a fan of Lord of the Rings. And The Hobbit. And most of Tolkien's work. Some of it gets a little long-winded and goofy, but, you know. Um, you're the director. Uh -huh. So, Stumble, Steady Aim, Just Reward. Who are we playing? I don't like that one. Um, that's more like a foot instead of a hand. Um, Vern Jeske. Yay, Vern! Vern, Vern got an Uncanny, yeah. Out of Ammo, mm. and a Disarmed. Okay. Mm. All right. Right. So not not a super starting hand on either side there. No. Nope. I almost gave uh, Atheron uh, a spell. I thought about giving him a spell, but then I was worried about it messing with him a little too much. Every once in a while, I cheat. Every once in a while, I like to cheat ever so slightly. What? Yeah. No, say it again. I can do that better. Okay. Every once in a while, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. And see. Every once in a while, I like to cheat a little bit. What? <laughs> How was that? Was that good? was good. That was okay. good. We can edit that. We can edit that together. It'll, it'll fit perfectly. Um, Hi, Bryn. Basically, in that, you know, sometimes I just make stuff up. Um, you know, you go back to the fire bugs. Uh, that we used in, you know, the 2021. 
there's an ability that they have that doesn't exist anywhere else. And I just made it up for that sort of situation because I was like, well, I want the fire bugs to do something fun, like <laughs> explode when they die. I thought that would be fun. So that was kind of fun. Um, for the elf in this, um, I was trying to come up with something that I wanted to use for that because we're playing this in kind of a fantasy, a... Uh, a dark ages sort mm -hmm. of setting um we do restrict the shooting in the middle earth setting so you're not allowed to move over six inches and shoot in the same turn nor can you shoot more than once per uh per turn so unlike the normal pulp alley rules where it's just like blam, 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 um, the shooting is a little more difficult in, in the Middle Earth setting. However, when I got to the ranger, I said, for him, we're just going to ignore that rule. So the ranger um, has a rule, basically one of his abilities just lets him ignore the restriction on shooting. So that means he could shoot as normal. So he can run and still shoot. He can uh, shoot as many times as, you know, normal in, in, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in, the, uh, in the game. Now, he won't be shooting more than once per turn, however. No, he could. He could. Like if he moves and shoots at one of the wolves mm -hmm. during his own activation, and then the wolf rushes him on the wolf's activation, mm -hmm. he could still shoot it again. Right, right, yeah. So that would be shooting twice, twice in the same yeah. turn. So there, I was thinking because the wolves have don't have any shooting that he, it's actually impossible for him to shoot more than once per turn, but that would be wrong. Yeah, he, he actually could shoot more than once yeah. per turn. But he's the only one on the table that can do mm -hmm. that. Although uh, Bilbo and possibly even Spec, no, not Spec. Spec doesn't have any shooting. Oh, he does. Spec does have his shooting dice. Aww. What? That's funny. It's not the same spec that we know. Um, so Spec has shoot dice. Bilbo has shoot dice. Uh, Gimrock has shoot dice. They are all capable of shooting. It's just that they're they can only shoot once per turn. Okay. Um, let's see, did we roll, we drew cards, we rolled for initiative, we rolled for everything, so I was working on the magic rules again today, trying to get that tightened up, uh, bless his heart, Manny Marino is helping out with some painting, so, uh, really appreciate that as well. What kind of comments do we have? Uh, in NASCAR, they say, if you ain't cheating, you're not trying. Mm. Uh, we have... Bryn Mayhew made a live show. Yay, Bryn! Adios Gringo got his director sticker today. Very cool. We sent off dangles. One dangle went out a couple days ago. Another dangle went out today. And then I have one dangle that is awaiting... An order. Uh, yeah. Yeah, waiting uh, address confirmation. Yeah. Uh, Chad, Chad is, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think I understand what you're saying there is that the scenarios tend to kind of, you know, kind of add the spice or the flavor for that setting or mm -hmm. for that particular moment. The basic rules cover the basic stuff, and then when you get to the scenarios, that's where those little special rules can come into play to kind of uh, yeah, so you're not cheating. You're just, you know, add adding, a little adding bit some extra. spice. Add, add, yeah, just adding that garlic. Just that you a little love. sprinkle. Oh, I do love me some garlic. Do love me some garlic. I'm not sure I can get enough. Who out there eats raw garlic? I do. So, uh, it's creative rewriting of the rules. Yeah, yeah. Sticker. Okay, I, I guess that's I it. That's it I guess tonight. that's it for tonight. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell so you get your notifications. Everybody, we posted a video earlier today that was Max and I painting some fire bugs. Uh -huh. It was heavily suppressed by YouTube, as they do. 
um, for, you know, their reasons. Uh, so if you didn't see it, I would really appreciate it if you would take a moment. I would be surprised if very many people saw it at all. Um, it's fairly adorable. It is really, really cute. If you watch it, make sure you watch to the end. You get to hear Max and me uh, painting some firebugs and talking about it and, and a few things that he has to share. He, is, he has wisdom beyond his years, so it's always fun to, to, uh, to hear what he has to say. Anywho, that was posted earlier today. Uh -huh. We'll have another video posted over the next couple of days, kind of talking about this scenario and some of the stuff that we're getting ready to set up. Yep. And then we have the live video on Sunday. 10 a.m. Central. Yep, 10 a.m. Central is the live video. If you'd like to play with us sometime, let us know, and we'll get you signed up as well. All right, Bessie. All right. Chat, chat a little bit. Let me get, let me get this warmed up over here. Uh, Lord of the Rings is the best, and Dave has no idea what he's talking about. What? I never said anything bad about he's it. He's pooing it. Oh, what? look. Hello. What? Come here, my friend. What do you have to show the... Kids, what's that? What is it? Talk about it's a caboose. A caboose? What color is it? Red. That's right. Are we done? Say bye. Bye. We're done now. <laughs>